All right, before we move on, um, I want to come back to the kind of final result on this one, which was not quite right. Um, these two terms, they don't actually cancel when you plug in the different limits. So this is, I got the answer wrong, it happens. All right, while I was rushing, I was trying to, I didn't want the video to get too long. Um, there's, there's a couple of ways that you could simplify things here. Um, and you can kind of spot it already here or here. Um, once we reach this point, right, we're integrating an even function that could simplify our lives a little bit, right? Because if we, uh, if we want to, instead of going from minus one to one, we can go from zero to one, double it, right? Use symmetry. That makes the integral a little bit easier because now the lower limit is zero. You can do that if you want. It'll work out the same. Uh, so yeah, let me, let me point that out so we could do it that way, right? We could say if we did four pi, times half secant theta tan theta plus the natural log of secant theta half in front there tan theta zero to pi over four using symmetry so then we get well let's see cancel with the one halves with the four pi we have two pi um, so secant pi over 4 is root 2, tan of pi over 4 is 1, so we have root 2 plus the natural log of, and this is just going to be regular bracket now, um, root 2 plus 1. Okay, for the lower limit we get, well, tan of 0 is 0, so that term vanishes. Um, secant of 0 is 1, but, uh, and tan of 0 is 0, but natural log of 1, 0, okay? Ah, so that's our answer, okay? If we had, um, if we had kind of forgotten and we, if we did the lower limit instead, um, we kind of, we got the 2 root 2 part before, the 2 pi root 2, that's there. Um, for that bit, what you'd have to do is you'd have, you'd have, for the upper limit, you'd have root 2 plus 1, okay? And then you'd have to subtract off, and for the lower limit, you'd get root 2 minus 1, because secant is even, but tan is odd, so you get a sign change. Um, and the way you kind of reconcile this is playing around using log properties, right? So you can say, well, that's like root 2 plus 1 over, over root 2 minus 1. And then if you multiply top and bottom on the inside by root 2 plus 1, right, rationalize the denominator, you find that you get root 2 plus 1 squared, and of course that's the same thing as 2 times the natural log of root 2 plus 1, okay? So it works out. It works out whichever way you want to do it. Uh, now, you probably haven't actually memorized the integral of secant cubed, and you probably don't want to go through the steps of evaluating it because it's a bit of a pain. Remember, it's multiple integration by parts. It's, it's kind of ugly. Um, Another way that you could do this, right, another alternative method once you get down to here is you could, you could do the following. Instead of doing a tangent substitution, remember that you can always do a hyperbolic substitution. So if we rely on the fact that, let's see, so remember that cos hyperbolic squared t minus sine hyperbolic squared t, that's 1, right? So hyperbolic cos squared is 1 plus hyperbolic sine squared. And so the other option that I have here is I can let u equal to hyperbolic sine, okay? du then is hyperbolic cosine. And the square root of 1 plus u squared, well, that's going to be the square root of 1 plus hyperbolic sine squared, which is the square root of hyperbolic cos squared. So you get um, square root of, so the square is gone, right? Um, and so if you do that substitution, well, okay, then you also have to worry about, you know, limits, right? So t is going to go from, and again, we can, we can double, right? We can, we could change this to make that a zero, that becomes a 4. Um, and so what we get 
and it's, it's a little bit messy now. We get the integral from, so hyperbolic sine of zero is zero. That one works out. Um, and then we gotta figure out what value of t gives us hyperbolic sine um, equal to one. And for now, we could just say, well, that's hyperbolic sine inverse of one, okay? And then this becomes hyperbolic cos, hyperbolic cos, we get cos hyperbolic squared t dt, right? Um, so you could do it that way as well. Um, how are we doing for time? Oh, we don't want to make this one too long, I don't think. Um, so then you go, there's, sort of finish this off, there's two things that you look up, because, I don't know, nobody ever remembers the hyperbolic stuff. Um, you look up the power reduction formula for hyperbolic cosine, it's going to look an awful lot like the power reduction formula for hyperbolic, uh, or for regular cosine, right? I'm look, look in this section on hyperbolic functions. Um, the other thing you can do is you can, you can look up the value. Well, what is actually the value of, of hyperbolic sine inverse of 1? And remember that for the hyperbolic functions, we can express the inverses in terms of logarithms. And if you go and you look up what does that inverse function look like, how do you express it in terms of logarithms, what do you get if you actually plug in um, t is equal to 1, well, you're going to get that, okay? So it's, it's worth going through checking. We still have that, um, you know, that 4 pi is still sitting there out front, right? Um, go through, review that section on hyperbolic functions, um, check that identity, check that value, put everything in. You'll get the same answer whichever way you do it.